How you doing fam bam? This is Chris Miso here and I'm here for another exciting video because we're going to talk about graphics cards. And not just any graphics cards, but we're going to talk about PCI Express speeds. And does it really matter if you have a PCI Express 5.0 at X16? Currently, especially that the RTX 4090 is now released and it came out with the 12 volt high power port. And you also have AMD's Radeon 7900 XTX that will soon also be released in December. Now, both graphics cards currently do not have PCI Express 5.0 speeds. Instead, they do both have PCI Express 4.0 at X16 speeds. Now, the biggest comparison that I will have in this video is we're gonna compare PCI Express 3.0 at X16, which is relatively half of PCI Express 4.0 at x16 which is really kind of like pci express 4.0 at x8 speeds and does it really matter if your card is really at those speeds will you see big frame drops will you see any type of effect in gameplay at all and that's what we will discuss and i will share these very videos with you which i'm more than happy to but the very first thing you have to understand how pci express works Peripheral Component Interconnect, which is the newest technology that they had back in 2003, and they introduced express speeds. To get an idea of how fast these speeds are, back then when it was first released, you had two and a half giga transfers per second for PCI Express 1.0 and 3. Now let's fast forward to PCI Express 3.0 because that is still very relevant, and you do have people out there that still has those systems, which is nothing wrong. And you will see soon why. Excuse me, just catching Ted Ursa because it's Ted Ursa for a day. The speeds for PCI Express 3.0, which was released in 2010, was 8.0 gigatransfers per second. PCI Express 4.0 was 16 gigatransfers per second, and which was released in 2017. And then you have PCI Express 5.0, which was released in 2019, which is 32 gigatransfers per second. And you have PCI Express 6.0. Wait, you said PCI Express 6.0? Yes, it does exist, but currently not in the consumer market. It is out for the enterprise market, and that runs at 64 gigatransfers per second. So do we really need all these speeds? And the reason why I want to share this with you is it's going to be a big decision, especially if you're thinking of purchasing a motherboard that does have PCI Express 5.0 speeds. Now, I'll let you judge the videos for yourself to get an idea of the type of benchmarks and numbers that we get out of these games, because you'll see if there's any big frame drops from dropping it down to PCI Express 3.0. Currently with the ASUS motherboard, we were testing it on a X670E Crosshair motherboard. Take a watch and let me do less talking and more showing. Requesting recon flyover.
like you do. Or I'll do something worse than blowing cancer in your face. As you can see here, you could notice that the frame drops aren't significant enough. NVIDIA just so happened to update their drivers to the newest ones, and supposedly it is less problematic, but that's a whole nother issue I wanna talk about later. The more important thing is, is there frame drops or is there any type of effect in speeds? And surprisingly, you can see that in 3D Mark that PCI Express 3.0 at X16 actually scored higher than PCI Express 4.0 at X16. And you're probably thinking what's wrong with the picture and there's probably nothing wrong with the picture. It's just the fact that there's less load on the CPU. PCI Express has not changed when it comes to their 11 pins when it does power up at 75 watts. If you take a look at the bus, it doesn't matter which version of PCI Express that you have, whether it's PCI Express 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, whichever, the bus wattage is still the same. That does not change. But what is most interesting is that from 3.0 to 4.0, it wasn't that much of a big upgrade. Let me just throw that in there. But once you went to 5.0, that was the bigger upgrade. That's why they introduced the 12 volt high powered port that everyone loves, especially from Nvidia. But anyway, to get to the point, not only is it supposed to be power saving, but it's also supposed to provide more power when you need it the most, which is power delivery. And that's something that was needed, especially in the newer generation when it came to graphics cards. In the future generation, do you really need PCI Express 5.0 for your graphics cards and your GPU usage? And the answer is no, not really. You don't really need it. And you can even see like from testing wise, that it's not really a significant increase. Even from PCI Express 3.0 at X16 speeds, you don't really see that much of a hit. Of course, you might add in, oh, well, there's gonna be bottlenecking and there's you're not gonna get the full frames uh, that you want. You're not gonna get that extra two and a half frames per second. Are you a competitive gamer to the point where it really matters that much to you? Another thing I must add is that more than likely you're probably not gonna use those speeds until the next generation of graphics cards, whether it's from AMD or Nvidia themselves. And of course, Intel, you can't forget they also have GPUs themselves. The most important thing when it comes to PCI Express 5.0 or any PCI Express at all is the availability of what you're gonna be using it for, whether it's multimedia or if it's video card, audio, whichever use because really that expansion is for you to use. 
Also, you have to keep in mind, if you do use Intel's chipset, for example, the 12th or 13th gen, that when you do use a PCI Express 5.0 at X16 speeds, and you do install a PCI Express NVMe at 5.0 speeds, that it will also take a hit and will split your X16 down to X8. And the reason why is it's not quite supported yet, but I do expect the 14th generation of Intel to provide more extra help. On the other hand, AMD does offer up to X28, which gives you enough for X16 plus X4 on each of their M2 slots. It is also to, important to keep that in mind if you are looking to purchase a motherboard or you're looking to do some sort of future proofing because you just have to know it's not quite ready yet. Even though they did offer, AMD did mention they will have M2 at Gen 5 speeds for PCI Express. That's supposed to be released of November 2022, but yet we hear crickets and it hasn't been released yet. More than likely, we're not probably gonna see it anytime this year. I'm guessing we're gonna see it next year. You also have to realize too, if you're whether you're a gamer, but I can say for content creators, it's probably gonna be more useful to have the higher transfer speeds, but gaming wise, you're not gonna really need it. And they do have Microsoft Direct Storage and that's still brand new. And very few games do support Direct Storage. Yeah, sure, you can get PCI Express 5.0, but yet we do not even utilize the speeds for PCI Express when it comes to graphics cards as you see already. And now if they do push into PCI Express 5.0, again, it's more of a marketing in my opinion, but when it does come for NVMe speeds, if you really need those speeds, then uh, that's great. Especially for content creators, I can understand because, or if you are a graphic designer, you can use those type of speeds as there's less delay for your work. But when it comes to something like gaming, you're not really gonna see that much of a difference. Sure, if you copy and paste files over and over, you love copy and paste and files over to uh, different drives. And again, this has to be both NVMe drives that are 5.0 to really see that much of a significant difference when it comes to it. Samsung is working on their eighth generation chipset, which is their 3D VNAND, which is gonna be really neat to see. They do promise up to 13,000 megabytes per second, which is a huge increase over their PCI Express 4.0. Of course, you know the Samsung came out with the 990 Pro, which offers up to 7,000 megabytes per second PCI Express 4.0 speeds. So in reality, you have to ask yourself, will you really use these speeds? Do you really need PCI Express 5.0? Do you, Is it really worth upgrading to a brand new chipset? Of course you can, you can upgrade to a new chipset. And if you do, you can upgrade cautiously but don't expect the PCI Express 5.0 graphics cards to be released anytime soon. If they do, maybe Nvidia will offer a RTX 4090 Ti that is PCI Express 5.0 X16, but will I think there's gonna be any difference when it comes to those bus speeds? Personally, I don't think there's gonna be that much of a difference and I could be wrong, but just looking from prior history, more than likely you're not gonna see that much of a difference. And if there is, it would be a big shock. I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody who loves PC and tech, make sure you share this video with them. If you're not part of the big wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure to follow my Twitter handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fan band, guys, if you have any questions at all, and hopefully I resolved all your questions, but if you do, make sure you comment right down below, or if you have anything else you would like to add to what I have to say, it would be great to hear anybody's input on top of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo, signing out.